Good morning, Netters. Today is the 19th of December. And I've just gathered a little bit of show and tell around me to share with you this morning. And I'm not sure how much sort of actual vlogging we'll be able to do today. We have some friends of Steve's arriving pretty soon and they've come up from Canberra. Now we can finally have visitors in our state. I think um, quite a few people have mentioned how strange it is seeing us out and about and people not wearing masks. And yes, I think it is quite strange and I feel a little bit weird sharing that with you, seeing as most of you wouldn't dream of going out of the house without a mask on at the moment. Um, but the situation here is that in our state, which is Queensland, since about March, we had the borders of the state closed. It opened briefly a couple of months ago and then closed again very quickly when the um, there was outbreaks of COVID in Melbourne and Sydney. And so, um, yeah, shortly after they opened, I think they opened, the border opened for about two weeks and then was closed again. So, um, yeah, so it's been quite strict in terms of travel and people coming into the state and we've managed to contain community spread that way. And um, yeah, so it's been a long time since we've been able to have visitors from interstate, um, which is <laughs> a long roundabout way of explaining why this is very exciting <laughs> and a little bit daunting. Um, yeah, anyway. So that's what we're doing this weekend. And I just thought I'd take the chance now to just show you a few things. So I showed you my Advent Hexi set that um, my lovely friend Tracy from the Comfy Red Couch sent me for a Christmas present. And I've glued up about half of the um, 24 sets. So she sent me um, sets of enough hexies to make a little hexie flower. And also the first stage is gluing them together. So I've done that. And I think what I might do is, um, before I get too much further into um, into the month and into gluing them together I will make up one flower at least to show you um, that would be nice to have <laughs> to have one little flower made um, but I thought so I, I, I drew 12 lucky dips the other day so I might draw out another so 13 14 spots, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So if I glue these together, I'll be sort of up to date. Keep getting behind with my advents, but that's okay. I'm enjoying them very much as I as I get to them in my own in my own time. Um And I think I'll try and share with you my Liberty Hexi projects that I have happening as well, which are similar. I have joined a subscription through a Perth fabric store called the Strawberry Patch. No, the Strawberry Thief. And the Strawberry Thief is the name of a particular Liberty print that is the owner's favourite Liberty print. So she named her shop the strawberry thief after that particular print. 
Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll share, I'll share that project with you as well. Every month I get, um, some hexes kind of similar to this. I get the papers and the, and the pre-cut hexes, um, to, to make up into quilts. And I'm doing a one inch size and a two inch size of that. So quite a lot of hexing happening here as well. Um, so it's a lovely little combination. This is the center and these are the petals. So yes, having fun with this little project. Um, and for my sweet fiber advent, um, I have two for today. We didn't podcast yesterday. Um, had a rest day yesterday. Vlog. Vlog. Didn't vlog yesterday. Um, these are quite tightly <laughs> knotted. <laughs> so, not the most elegant unwrapping in the world. Ooh, this is a bright one. Something blue. Adorable. You might have guessed that I don't have Cindy in here today, so I can actually <laughs> show you things without having them snatched off me. And this one is Shipwreck. It's a beautiful, beautiful sea blue. So they will be together in the blanket. And a little bit of other show and tell. Um, Danny George, Little Bobbins, has released her Christmas Eve sock pattern or her Christmas sock pattern. And if you're a sock knitter, you probably are aware, but she every year for the past, um, I think she said six years, I can't remember. She just did a little Instagram post talking about her Christmas Eve cast-ons. Um, I think she said six years that she's been doing the Christmas Eve cast-on with the hashtag Christmas Eve cast-on. And so she's just released Clara's Festive Socks. Um, absolutely gorgeous sock design. Really, really sweet. And so I am going to knit that pattern for my Christmas Eve cast-on. I haven't been doing the Christmas Eve cast on every year, but I think I've kind of done it most years since I've known Danny and or since she's been doing it. Probably not the first year. I probably didn't realize it was happening the first year, but um, I think uh, maybe the second or third year we did a collaboration together and Danny made these beautiful bags for the kit and I did um, the vintage fairy lights sock pattern, which was my first sock pattern. Um, so this is the vintage fairy lights bag by Little Bobbins, and I use this every year for my Christmas Eve cast on project. Basically, I try to. I think one year I was away in Canada and didn't have it with me. Um, and vague this morning. I have had two coffees but doesn't seem to be touching the sides yet. Um, yeah so she has four four beautiful Christmas inspired sock patterns now and one year the year I was in Canada I knit the the one with the little trees on the side which I enjoyed very very much. Um, Oh yes, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> in the kit we also had Beautiful Yarn by Hedgerow, Hedgerow Yarns in the UK. And she has uh, recently done a little update in her shop of fairy light socks. It's not with that, the vintage, so they're a little bit brighter than the original vintage fairy light colourway. Um, so that was 
very fun to see that colorway sort of coming back in a new, brighter um, edition. Yeah, so that's the, the back of the bag, a little more light. Um, and these are exactly like the lights we had on my Christmas tree as a, as a child. So uh, this holds a lot of joy and meaning for me. And I'm thinking about what yarn to use. I recently did a little bit of a shop at NNK Yarns. And Lisa is based in Brisbane and I met her recently at the, um, the yarn retreat that we had in O'Reilly's. And I saw it, she posted on Instagram and it was a totally enabling post because she had all these luscious berry colors. So I bought these, which I just thought were beautiful and I think they go really nicely together. So I'm not sure if I want to sort of keep them together um, or use them for one of, use one of them for the socks. And I also had this that um, she gave me at the retreat, sea glass colorway. Um, and that's very similar to the, um, the pair that Tracy from the Comfy Red Couch knit as a test knit for Danny. Um, and I really thought that was very beautiful. Um, the socks have a little I-cord bow at the top that goes through the eyelets. And Tracy did the socks in a, a Tiffany inspired colorway. So she had the socks in something similar, quite similar to this and a little cream or white bow. So I thought that looked lovely. Um, so I might, I might do this, this one, but, um, yeah, aren't these just delicious? This is Holly, this is Burgundy, and this is Gingerbread House. Mm. So, um, lots of festive colours to choose from. So I'll, I'll let you know what I end up deciding on, but I'm leaning towards this one at the moment. Uh, and then I was out shopping on one of Sophie and my many shopping trips to the to the mall, to the shopping centre. Is it Cindy? No. <laughs> she might be outside the door. I heard a little groan and I thought maybe Cindy had snuck in here and was hiding under the sofa. Um, anyway, so we're at the mall and... We are at the mall and I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a, a nice Christmas dress to wear on Christmas Day? Um, my wardrobe has become quite functional. <laughs> I've done a lot of decluttering and a lot of sort of adapting to living in Australia um, in terms of what I bought and um, decluttered or you know given given away in my wardrobe um, and so I don't really have summery nice dresses or nice outfits at the moment um, because I haven't had to um, get anything like that this year I haven't been leaving the house very much so certainly haven't been really going to any events and I thought, well, what if I could make a Christmas dress? <laughs> because I've been collecting fabric and patterns. Um, so, but it's getting a bit close now, so I don't know if that's going to happen. But anyway, I thought I'd share some of my ideas. So a while ago, I was inspired to buy some patterns from the Friday Pattern Company. Um, I came across it on Instagram and was very taken with their designs. So this is the sagebrush top which I was originally attracted to and thought that's is what I really wanted to make. And then I was ordering from them in the US and so I thought I'd order a few patterns to make the postage worthwhile um, and I ordered the, the Cambria duster 
which is a very light coat and I thought if I was I, I think I ordered these in winter back in June or July so I thought if I wear anything like a layer here it would be a very light um, coat like this I don't actually need a coat up here but if I was to go down south down to Sydney or Melbourne <laughs> I might get to wear it um, and then the wilder gown this is what came to mind when I was thinking about making a Christmas dress but it would have to be short sleeved because anything with long sleeves would be way too hot um, so maybe there is a short sleeve version. So this is a dress, various formats, and also a top. It could be a top version, just a blouse. So that's what I was thinking for my my dress. But then I also ordered this one, um, which is the Roscoe blouse and dress by True Bias. And I'd seen this on Instagram as well as a blouse and thought it was a really nice design. Um, but it's also a dress and it doesn't have a short sleeve version so I'd have to do a modification. And I'm not sure if that would really work because it's got quite a deep armpit thingy area. So I'm not sure if I can, if that would look any good short sleeve. So yes, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking about. And I think I have some other dress patterns. I have some other Merchant and Mills patterns as well that could be options, although they're not so um, dressy. They're more tunicky and plain, but that might be okay. And a pretty fabric might be enough for me. <laughs> I'm very plain in my dressing. As you might have noticed so when I was looking for the um, the Roscoe blouse pattern I found it at um, a sh online or a, it's a physical shop here as well but it also they sell online um, called the drapery in Adelaide and um, I feel like I have a little bit of a connection because Fiona, who owns, I think she owns the drapery, um, has been a blogger for a really long time. And when I first got into, discovered blogs, she was one of the blogs that I followed. And she used to make toys. And so when I was living in London, I managed to order one of these beautiful toys that Fiona made um, and her blog was Hop Skip Jump and she has a book of toys also and so she made me Charles, Charles the monkey um, and I felt at the time very lucky to um, be able to get Charles because she wasn't doing very many and it was sort of a situation where you had to I think um, like sort of order and it was a, there was a bit of a queue and of course for beautiful handmade things so Charles has been um, hanging out in the girls bedrooms I think I got him before Sophie was born um, he's got this gorgeous little rosette on his vest and um, these little um, stretch material trousers <laughs> and the trousers would always fall off and um, so Charles would be hanging out without his pants on, usually. And so I feel like it's a major feat of, I don't know, organisation or something. Um, toy parenting that I managed to always find his trousers <laughs> from wherever they ended up in the toy bin or under a bed or wherever and keep them. Um, because yes, they were always lying on the floor somewhere. 
So I eventually rescued him from the girls' toy baskets once they kind of grew out of soft toys. Lexi hasn't really grown out of soft toys yet, but Sophie has. And now I have him as a beautiful piece of fabric art in my studio. So thank you, Fiona. I'm sure you're not really watching this, but um, yes, it feels like Charles has come home to Australia as well and uh, inspires me and keeps me company. And so it's nice to have that little connection. Um, and I also ordered this beautiful linen fabric. Um, I'm not sure if this will be enough to make a dress. I can't remember how much I ordered, maybe two meters. So this could potentially be the fabric I use, my Christmas dress. It's a very light, beautiful linen. I think it's Japanese, just gorgeous. getting um, instructions from my director that I'm just taking too long to they chat about all this stuff. Guess we're going to be here soon. Um, but just before I finish <laughs> chatting about crafty things, which I could do all day long, um, when, uh, when the ladies at the drapery sent me um, the fabric, they also sent little samples of the Lithuanian linen colours, uh, which are just gorgeous. So I'll be um, keeping this close to my desk or on my desk, maybe not on my desk, seeing as it's meant to be decluttered and pristine, but which it clearly isn't. But um, look at this beautiful watermelon colour. Rose, it's called. And this one as well, this is my colour, but I actually have some, a dress quantity of linen in a very similar colour already. That I think I bought from Ray Stitch in London. She was there. <laughs> grown before. Cindy I think is not feeling too well because she jumped up on my desk the day before yesterday and ate four chocolates that I was having as a special treat. I'd had two from a little box of those shell Ghislaine chocolates and uh, she got up on my desk and scoffed the rest of them so I think she might be suffering a little bit maybe she's just tired I don't know um, I don't really know no chocolate no do puppies aren't meant to have chocolate but I don't really know exactly what it does to them probably just makes their tummy not feel so great um, so that's all the show and tell I have for you today and we are going to go out for lunch there's a lovely little cafe um, on the river, which has, um, it's just sort of a, a hole in the wall, a snack bar that does burgers and fish and chips and things like that. And it's outdoors and puppies can go as well. So as long as the weather, um, stays okay, it's just suddenly become very cloudy. Um, but yes, that's what we're up to this afternoon. So if we can, we'll share a little bit of our outing with you and yeah, talk to you later.
I'm just about to run out the door and head to a yoga class. We had a lovely lunch down at Cotton Tree and it's a beautiful sunny day today. It's been really rainy and wet and humid for the past few days, but today was very nice. And I just wanted to pop in quickly and say, um, I hope you've had a good day and see you tomorrow and happy knitting.